and destined to do what you called us to do. And Father, we just pray now that our spirits would be enlightened and that the Keharev Ish, the inward man, would be exalted in all of us. That our flesh would take a seat. That our inward man would rise up. We praise you now, Father, that you have given us spiritual ability. You've given us stamina. You've given us patience. You've given us endurance. Your word says that you've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, Father, we, we speak today and we acknowledge the fact that we lack nothing. It's all in us. And if it's not activated in us, Father, it's not because of you. It's because of the inability of our own mind to accept what you've done. And Father, today we accept what you have done. And we set aside all of the contrary negative thoughts of our mind, all of the contrary negative thoughts and words of other people, and we accept who you say that we are. Hallelujah. And Father, we accept the fact that there is no age limit on your anointing and on your wisdom. Yes. A child can be anointed. Yes. A senior citizen can be anointed. Yes. And we thank you, Father, for those who are 100 years old, not too late, yes. to accept your nature yes. and begin to walk in your order. For those who are one-year-old, it's not too early, hallelujah, to accept your nature and begin to walk in your order. And Father, we just thank you today because our spirit knows who you are. Hallelujah. The inward man knows who you are. And Father, this is the day that Psalm 23 come alive in us. The Lord is our shepherd. And we lack nothing. He make us to lie down in green pastures. You are our shepherd, Father. You anoint our head with oil. And what happens? Our cup runneth over. And we thank you, Father, that the oil of your anointing is running over from the inside on to the outside. Yes. And that the enemy no longer has victory in our mind. Hallelujah. We rebuke that spirit now that would defeat our mind. The husband man, I ask first. Hallelujah. Amen. That the mind would be purified. Yes. That our words would be clarified. That our hearts would be purified. You said, Father, that you would give us a real heart and take away the heart of stone. Yes. And Father, we thank you. And so today we believe you, we receive you, we accept you, hallelujah. And we honor you. And we thank you, Father, even when our words are contrary to the theme of religion. When our words are contrary to that which is normally taught. We thank you because we know you're contrary to the theme of religion. You are contrary to things that are usually taught. Yes. We thank you, Father, that the religious world has no bearing on who you called us to be. Yes. We thank you for that. And Father, we bless you because we know your word is said yes. that many are called and few are chosen. And Father, we're not alarmed, hallelujah, that the chosen few knows who they are. Yes. And we thank you for it. And we bless you right now. And Father, we just pray for everyone in this room. We pray for everyone that would put their eye on this video. We pray that you bless them in Yeshua's holy name. We speak blessing. We speak grace and peace into the life of every ear that will hear the sound of our voices. And we thank you for it right now, Father. And we pray because your word has said that you know the authority. And you know the rank of authority. And you know the responsibility, the ability, and the direction of authority. So we send your word now. As you said in Psalms 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Yes. And Father, we send your word now to the atmosphere. We send your word into mind and into the mind and heart of every listener. Yes, Lord. That you will begin a revival personally in every single one of us. Yes. And we thank you for it. And we love you, Father, with everlasting love. And we will never leave you, nor will we forsake you. But we'll, we'll be with you always, even until the end. We speak your words that you've spoken to us. We speak them right back to you. And we bless you. David said, oh, bless the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And Father, we thank you that today 
we are together in you. One, the heart in you. And we thank you for that. That the witness of your spirit, the unity of faith is here with us. Hallelujah. And we don't stand against the devil alone. But we stand against all those who oppose righteousness. And we thank you, Father, that your word would prevail. The gates of hell should not prevail against your church. And we thank you for that. And we love you. And we acknowledge you. Reposition us, Father. Hallelujah. Reset us, Lord. Let there be a new navigational portal in our heart. That the old, hallelujah, will shed away. And that the new will shine bright in our spirit. And we thank you. And we love you. Hallelujah. And we don't want to hang you back on the cross without, without our doubt. We don't want to hang you back on the cross with our words. But Father, you are resurrected. And we're resurrected with you. According to Romans chapter 6, we got up when you got up. Yes. We laid down when you laid down and we got up when you got up. And we thank you. Hallelujah. In Yeshua's holy name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, isn't God good? All the time. Man, man, man. Isn't it good that what we believe is not based on any human being? Isn't that true? Yes. Your belief ain't based, at least it shouldn't be, based on another human being. You know, we're not faddish. Y'all know what I mean by that? Yeah. We're not faddish. Mm -hmm. what, what am I saying, uh, Pastor Thompson? Basically, basically, we don't change with the time. Thank you. We don't go with the crowd. We don't. We're not in the know of the world. You know, we're not. We're not with the fad. The fad says wear your hair like this, and all the women get their hairstyle like that. We, we're not with the fad. You know, we do what we do. I look the way I want to look. It don't matter to me what Prince Harry is wearing. I don't even know who's. Sets the trends nowadays, but you know, use this the singers, you know, and the Queen of England, not the Queen, but the uh, yeah, the Queen of England, who sets the, the fad and the tone for what you wear. Y'all, y'all, see, see people. Uh, I can't remember her name before she died. Diana, Diana whatever Diana, Diana wore. Diana. That's what that's what you saw all the people wearing. Y'all gonna tell the truth, and and people try to say, oh no, people look saints was following that stuff. The saints of God was following that stuff. Whatever the uh, the Backstreet Boys was wearing, or or the guys who came out with the Timberlands, I'm going way back now. And everybody started wearing that stuff, and, you know, because they looked to the celebrities as examples. They won't admit it, they won't confess it, but they looked to Beyonce to see what to wear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. They looked to because I, I don't even know, but they looked to her to see what to wear, and that's faddish. Yes. That's that's keeping up with the trend. All that is, that, that has nothing to do with spirituality, nothing at all. No. But we get caught in that fad and we want to look a certain way and make sure we got on the latest. You know what the latest is? The latest is whatever I wear. Amen. That's what the latest is to me. If I'm going to wear that hat is out of style, it can't be. Come it's on. impossible for it to be out of style. Why? Because I got it on. Yeah. So it can't be out of style. Amen. So, but we try to keep up with the fad rather, rather than just creating an atmosphere of our own. And then when you get like this, here comes the trouble. When we get like this and we start acting as if we don't care about what other people think, you get in trouble for that. Mm -hmm. And people walk away from you, they leave you, they criticize you, they talk down, talk, you know why? Because you're not trendy enough. That ain't what they say, but that's what the real reason is. You're not trendy enough. You're not, you don't have this, and you're not, and you're not. Let me tell you something. If my wife lacks something that she don't have, whose responsibility is to help her get it? You are. You ain't this and you don't have and you ain't oh, okay so then why am I in your life? <laughs> Supposedly we're helpers who? One, one to two ain't nothing. Yeah. So then if I got a lack, if I got a need, if the church has a lack, the church has a need, then instead of you abandoning, you're supposed to say, How can I help implement? Yeah. But the reason why you can't say that is because you're not of the same nature, you're not of the same purpose, you're not of the same desire. There's something different going on, and that's why we can't stay together. Because we don't have one purpose. First Corinthians 1 and 10. Whenever you talk about that, you gotta, gotta read First Corinthians 1 and 10. <laughs> <clears throat> Just for GP. <laughs> but but there's a there's what is it? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Uh -huh. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak How the many same others? thing. How many? All that you all do what? Speak, speak the same thing. The same thing. What else? And that there be no divisions. How many divisions? Zero. None. Why? Because the house divided? 
cannot stand. It won't stand. It's going to wobble. It looks like it's standing, but it's wobbling. And if it wobbles long enough, pretty soon it's going to teeter further than one side to it can't get back up. Mm-hmm. You ever see an 18 wheeler in a windstorm? Yes. And, and, the, and the, what do you, the cabin, or what do you call it? What do you call it? The trailer? Yeah, the trailer. The trailer is I saw it on the video just the other day. It was a high windstorm, and one had already flipped over, and the other one hit that same patch of wind and flipped over and laid right next to the other one. It, because why? Because it was teetering one little bit more than the other side and it fell over. And that's what a house divided do. It falls. That's the scripture, right? A house divided cannot fall. The Bible said, no, a house divided cannot stand. Thank you. No division among you. What else? That's that is a little more. Uh yes. Uh but that ye be perfect. But that ye be perfectly joined together. How? In the same mind and the same judgment. So if we don't have the same judgment, we're not perfectly joined together. If we don't have the same mind, we can't have the same judgment. So we gotta have the same mind and the same judgment. Now that's something that most people say we can't ever get to. You hear people talk about the, the things in the scriptures that we can never do. Mm-hmm. Right? Things in the scriptures that, that cannot be attained. As if you cannot live without sin. We say that the body of Christ, I'm going to tell you right now, the body of Christ is diluted. It's diluted with false doctrine. Come it's diluted now. with false doctrine yes. that teach us what we cannot do. It's like, I, some of y'all might not remember when you first got saved, they gave you this list of everything you can't do. How many of y'all remember that? When you first get saved, I mean, when I first got saved, it was a long laundry list. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do And nothing about now that you're in Christ, you can enjoy it. No, it was all about what you cannot do. Touch not, taste not, yeah, the, the, the unclean thing. So we, you know, so if you get that list of what you can't do, and it gets, it gets depressing. Like, wait, what have I done? I thought I was getting a better life here, but now you got a list of what you can't do. You know why it's like that? It's like that because nobody understood the inner workings of the Holy Spirit from our, you know, from inside of us to outside of us. All they knew is you get the Holy Ghost, you hug up a Shonda, he give a two, he come in a Honda, blah blah. That's all you knew, but you didn't know anything that the Holy Ghost, the purpose of it. Is to conform Christ in us. Yes. Paul said to Christ be what? Formed in you. Uh, yes. So formed in us. So the purpose of the Spirit of God yes. is to form Christ in us. Because if you're led by the Spirit of Christ, then the Scripture said you are the Son. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you are the Son of God. And who was the Son of God? He was the fullness of the Godhead in a body. And this is what God wants for us. But the church is so confused and mixed up. We're so confused and mixed up. I mean, we, we tend, if we, if we listen to the voice of the enemy long enough, we're going to end up acting like him. Mm-hmm. You better believe that. If I let the devil talk to me long enough, I'm going to end up doing exactly what he wants me to do. I'm going to end up saying exactly what he wants me to say. You know why? Because that which has most influence in you, that's who you're going to replicate. Mm-hmm. The person who influences you the most, that's who you're going to act like. Yes. Now, if God is influencing me the most, who am I going to act like? That's him. Yes. So now, let, let, let's, let's uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And when I say today is short, I lie not. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, start at verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 10, uh-huh. uh, verse 4. Actually, uh, back up to verse 3. Because okay, what is it? Continuation. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, uh-huh. we do not war as the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war. What do you mean war? What does that mean? Though we walk in the flesh, meaning that we have a fleshly body. Yes. We have fleshly minds. We have the ability to be 100% calm. Do we? Yes. We have the ability to be 100% calm. And if we, now listen to that. If we have the ability to be 100% calm, what else do we have? The ability to be 100%, the ability to be 100% spiritual. Yeah. Because if we really have the spirit of God in us, then we have the same ability in God as we do in our flesh. It all depends on which one appeals more. And we might say, well, it's not more appealing, but I can't. Well, we actually, you know, we, we've told all of us, all of us have said to somebody before, you do what you want to do. Yes. 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 Come on with it. We do what you do. We do what we want to do. Do other people do what they want to do. That don't count to me. <laughs> y'all do what y'all want to do. What am I doing? Well, I'm struggling. <laughs> no, I'm doing what I want to do. I just don't want to accept it. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm acting a nut. You know why? Because I want to. Want to. Ah, that's hard to believe. But it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Read. Okay, so for for though uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do uh, not war after the flesh. No, wait, wait, wait. We don't fight no. after the flesh. No. Although we're in a human body, yes. we don't take defense like humans do. No. <sighs> Who is was it? Wednesday night when we were talking about the Lord didn't say a word. Right. He yes. went before his his uh, accusers yes. and they beat him. They spit on him. Yes. He asked for water. They gave him vinegar. And you know what he did? Nothing. 
He did not defend himself. And now our flesh, the number one thing about the flesh is the flesh wants to be justified. That's numero uno in the flesh. The flesh wants to be glorified. The flesh wants to be told it looks good. The flesh wants to be told, ooh, that's, 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 we have a need to hear those type of things. There ain't nothing wrong with a compliment. Nothing wrong with, you know, speaking good things. But we don't want that to be our ultimate desire is to have a nice word spoke about us. Hmm. What if nobody never compliments me? What am I going to do? Is my life over now? Am I done? Am I doomed? No. I, we don't war after the flesh. We don't do what carnal people do. We don't think like carnal people think. We don't do that. This is why all those who are called to the battle don't stay in the battle because they can't handle when the pressure comes. Amen. The Bible says, if you faint when, in a time of adversity, your strength is small. So no matter how deep of a message I preach, when the adversity comes, if I faint, I'm weak. Me, apostle? Yes! Mm -hmm. Yes! Mm -hmm. and, and, and if I ate, we check this out. If I ate, we I had a weak moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel that? Yes. So that don't mean that you're just permanently weak. Sometimes we just slip out. Oh, God, we give the devil a couple points, a couple brownie points, you know. And then, then you try to get him back. Too late, you ran off the other. So now what we got to do is double up. So next time you come, you know, we charge him twice as much. Yes. So this, this is this is the one of the goals, is to make sure that we're not fighting a carnal battle, warring like carnal people war, yes. retaliating like sinners retaliate. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with us? Somebody talk about me, say, you know what I do? I go on Facebook and get revenge. Mm -hmm. what, what are we doing? We have totally forgotten about the purpose of God in our life. We're busy trying to get things done. We're busy trying to chase our dreams. We're busy trying to get a man or a woman. We're busy trying to get all these things done. And somebody said something earlier, a new house, a new car. We're busy trying to get everything together. We want to get the kids situated. We got my parents and, and the old folks home. I got to get them together. I got to go. My insurance is about to last. I got to, we're trying to get everything together. And we forgot about the most important thing. The most important thing is that your soul is together. But all the cares of this life have choked out the world. Read, man, please. Verse. We war not after the flesh. Yes. Right. Verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're what? They're not carnal. So then we don't war after the flesh. Why? Because our weapons are not carnal. Right. Who can tell me what our weapons are? Think about it. It said weapons plural, didn't it? Yes. yes. More than one. So who can think about what? I, there's a scripture that lists perfect. What our weapons are. It said, bam, that's what they are. Yeah. Who knows what oh, it is? Oh, 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 Ephesians. <laughs> oh, come on with you, man. You got it. Ephesians what? Six. No, nope. no, nope. not, nope. not six. No, it's six. No. Is it six? No. Yes. See, y'all confusing me. Okay, hold on. It's Ephesians. I thought it was six. No, hold on. It's Galatians. Hallelujah. Galatians. Oh, yes, sir. Galatians oh, yes. Galatians 5 and verse 21. Read. Okay. It tells us what our weapons are. Is it 21? Uh, I'm going there. I was hooping when I said it, so I might have been wrong. 22. Galatians 5 and 22. Galatians 5 22. What do we say? Okay, but the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit. We don't war after the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the fruit of the spirit is. This is our weapon. Our weapon is the fruit of the spirit. What is it? But the fruit of the spirit is love. Stop. The fruit of the spirit is what? Love. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything else written after that comes out of love. It comes out of love. Now let me, let me throw this out there just for argument's sake. Somebody just said to me the other day that, that they love somebody, but they don't like them. Now, I know that sounds good, and it sounds so believable, but it ain't possible to not like somebody, but you love them. That is false humility. I'm going to tell you, I can say all I want to. I don't like them, but I love them. No, you don't love them. You want to be able to say that you love them because you're supposed to be a Christian, but you say, I don't like them. Well, the reason why you don't like them is because some fallacy or something in your own flesh stopping you from liking them. Then tell me what? Well, God don't like the ways of the sinners, but he loves the sinners. Oh, you add the word in there. Yep, the way. Thank you. You have the word in there. You might not like a person's ways, but you can still love them. But don't say, I don't like them, but I love them. If you don't like them, you need help. Not only do I love you, I like you. I might disagree with some of the things you do and say, but I still like you. Why would I say that? Because the Lord likes us. Yes. Anybody here done anything wrong since they've been saved? Not a thing. Not no. a thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Is it possible? Not a thing. Is it anything? Right? Did the Lord abandon us? 
No. No. Did he stop liking us? No. no. See, y'all stop with that. I don't like him, but I love him. You keep on saying it if you want to and justify it. Well, go on and put some posts on the, on the video and justify why you want to say it. No, it's okay. It's okay because your flesh is not in line with God. Not only do I like you, but I love you. The scripture said, but God so loved the world that he okay. gave. So you can't tell me he didn't like us, but he gave himself for us. If we look here, relationship has steps and levels to it. You got first you meet a person, and then you become acquainted with them, and then you begin to like them, and then you get affectionate for them, and then you begin to really care about them, and then you start loving them. It comes in different levels. You don't meet a person, I'm in love. You might feel like you're in love, but you ain't in love until you get to know them, have a relationship with them, and begin to know their ugliest place. Because you can say you're in love at first sight, soon the ugly spot hit. Soon we get in a bad argument. Ah, well, wait, I thought you were in love. No, I was in love with what I saw. I was in love with what I felt when I saw you walk by. Yep. On the ladies' part, I was in love with the way he sounded, the way he looked, his stature. Woo, he's six foot nine. Get in love with that. But when we're in love with the person's nature, number one, if you're in love with Christ, then real love shows up. Mm -hmm. Real love shows up. That's why the scripture plainly says what? The fruit of the spirit? Is Give me the weapons. All right. Read them. Joy. Peace. Uh -huh. Long These are weapons. Gentleness. Uh -huh. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such? There is no law. There is no law. Nothing can stop love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. Nothing can stop that. When those are our weapons, the Bible says, go back to it, the weapons of our conf, uh, warfare are not carnal, right? When those are our weapons right there, we can't be stopped. But we allow our mind to go in reverse. We, look, we know a lot of times we're going, we're looking for God in a backwards place. Our mind is going the wrong way, and we yet want God to do something, but we're going the wrong direction. We're moving out of all the things that God has called us to. We're, we're breaking down everything that God has gave us. We're chopping with a hammer at all the promises of God in our life, but we want God to do something. But guess who's in charge? I am. My flesh is. I'm in charge, but I want God to do something. Well, if God is going to move, guess who's got to get out the way? Right. Yes. I need to step out the way. What did John say? Profoundly. I must decrease, I must decrease that he can increase. So at least John was smart enough to know I need to die. But we, well, well, anyway, John, you know, when he said it, he meant it. Now, nah. I, I hear y'all. What happened when he went to prison? And he said, what did he say? Are you the real one? Right, right, right. Are you, what should I look for another? You know what, you know what happened? Uh, calamity came. Adversity came. He was nearing death. And so he wanted to make sure I just want to know if I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. I believe his heart was saying, I want to make sure I did God some justice in the earth. Is he the one? He's my cousin. I've been knowing that dude since, you know, I was born six months before him. Blah, 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 blah. And then, so I've been knowing him since he was a baby. Is he the one? Can't be. So he wanted to make sure that he done the right thing. Read. First Corinthians 10 4. Yes. Second Corinthians 10 4. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the so pulling down, down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare pull down strongholds. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meek, temp meekness, temperance pulls down strongholds. Walking in the spirit pulls down strongholds. And the funny thing about it, or the weird thing about it, I should say, is that we don't know that the stronghold is being pulled down immediately. Mm -hmm. Because our flesh wants to always, let me tell you something, you can't get away from your flesh. There is no such thing as getting away from your flesh. There is a such thing as controlling it. Yes. Yeah. You don't get out of your flesh and walk in a different vein and your flesh don't know. You're going to be in your body. But the goal is to be able to have authority over your own fleshly thoughts. Yes. Is that what Paul said? Yes. Paul said in what verse? 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Read it real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep under my body. I do what? Keep under my body. Look at the Greek word for keep under. Keep under is two words in the English. There's one word in the Greek. What is it? All right. Keep under is. Hupo piazzo. Yeah, hupo piazzo. Hupo piazzo. What do you mean? To beat black and blue. Paul says, I'm beating my eyes black and blue. To beat black and blue, read. 
to smite so as to cause bruises uh -huh. and livid spots. To cause bruises what? And livid spots. Livid spots. Oh, that, that don't sound. Y'all know what that means, but it don't sound good. Paul yeah. said, "I'm beating my. I'm keeping my flesh. Um, uh, what's the word? Inoperable. Yes. I'm making my flesh inoperable. That's what Paul says. Keep reading. Um, like a boxer, one buffets his body. Uh huh. Handle it roughly. Yes. Disciplined by hardships. Yes. Disciplined how? By, by hardships. Now, what's a hardship? A hardship disciplinary action against the body. You know what it is? Loving when people hate you. All right. You know what it is? It's walking in gentleness and peace when folk are angry against you and speaking all manner of evil against you for his name's sake. The, the disciplinary action is to not let the flesh have what it wants. Come on. You know when people say, well, if you'd have caught me 10 years ago, I'd be all up in you, you would be all up in there now. Yes. If that's your thought pattern. So the, the disciplinary action of the flesh is to not allow those thoughts that take root and have authority. Mm -hmm. Right? Read. Rest of the verse. All right. But I keep under my body, uh -huh. uh, yeah, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest Hallelujah. that by any means, when I have preached to others, I, I myself, myself should be a castaway. What does that mean? That means after I got done preaching, <clears throat> after I got done teaching, after the Holy Ghost is all over me, mm -hmm. and after everything was all so anointed, I'm drenching with the anointing, mm -hmm. and people falling out on the floor. After all that, and I walk out in my glory, and two hours later, I'm cussing. Yeah. Wait, two hours later, I'm chilling with my cigar. Well, cigar ain't saying nobody to wait. <laughs> Two hours ago, y'all feel what I'm saying? If we, if we're so glorious, and with this Paul said that I might be a castaway. So what Paul is saying is, I don't want to preach to others and then be lost. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do all of this church stuff and then be lost myself because I'm not aware of what the flesh is doing. I'm not aware that I'm operating in the scripture says uh, the weapons of the flesh. Right? Say Corinthians chapter 10. We'll finish that and we'll finish this. Alright. Uh, what is it? Let's see. Okay. Uh, what about what for not count? But might do God to put it down the strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down Casting down what? Imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So what's the high thing that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God? Or it is. It's our flesh. It's our flesh, and I'm going to tell you, I'm so guilty of it myself, of allowing the flesh to come in, and wanting carnality to rule, and getting all beside, people say, you just beside yourself. Yeah, it was, beside myself, acting a plum idiot. Come on, people of God, where are we? Do we really, 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 really believe that the Lord is going to come back in our lifetime? He ain't coming back in my lifetime, or I'll get my act together. He ain't coming back in somebody's lifetime, but not mine. What do you mean? I'm still carnal. Paul said, are you yet carnal? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, read it. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. What do you say? Verse 1. And I, brethren, could uh -huh. not speak unto you as unto spirit. I couldn't talk to you as grown-ups. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be around you and talk to you like you were mature. Paul said, I couldn't even give you the meat of what I wanted to give you. Why? Uh, let's see. Uh, but as unto carnal, even unto the babes in Christ. I, I talked to you like you were carnal, even a baby. Why? He says, I have fed you with milk. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not still, able to you, Then you weren't able and now you still can't have. Look, what in the yeah. world? Let us talk to the saints like that. Mm -hmm. Y'all are a bunch of babies. I'm trying to feed you with the oh, who he is. Okay. Paul didn't care. Paul just said it, right? Yep. Read it again. What I'm being interrupted. All right. <laughs> Verse 2. I have fed you with milk uh -huh. and not with me. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. Paul said you're still carnal. And because you're carnal, I can't give you meat. I, you can't feed a, a newborn baby a steak. No. What happened? You can't even give a baby a piece of meat. Because nope. the baby will choke it. They don't have teeth to grind it up with. And their esophagus is too small to swallow it. Mm -hmm. So you will kill them. So Paul said, I, you're not, you're, you're carnal. I can't give you the deep things of God. Right. And Paul says this, watch this next line. I'm going to prove to you how carnal you are. Read. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife. There's still and envy and strife. What else? Uh, strife and division. And divisions. Are ye not are you not yet carnal? And walk as men? You walk as men. There's division among you. There's envy and strife among you. Are you not yet carnal and walk as men? 
Paul is saying, I can't give you meat. That's why one verse, and I, I don't know what the verse is. I'm trying to hear it in my heart. The scripture said, Paul says, I desire to know nothing among you but Christ and him crucified. So we read that verse and we try to make it real deep. But it's not that it's real deep. Paul said, I desire to know nothing among you but Christ and him crucified. Why? Because you're carnal. I can't give you the meat of the word Christ and him crucified. That's milk. That's the milk of the word. I can't go into the things that's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 6. I can't talk to you about none of that because you're carnal. Mm. And we make Christ them two spots like it's deep. It is deep, but it's yet the milk of the word. There's more to get into than how you were baptized. There's more to get into than what's your Godhead belief. There's more to get into than the authority of But there's more to get into than these little bitty trivial things that we argue and fuss about. And people get mad at me because I say it. If you can have the Godhead perfected and be a liar, and perfecting the Godhead don't help you none. You say what you want to say. You can have water baptism perfected. You can have the belief in the Trinity or the Godhead, whatever you want to perfect it and be evil and wicked. What does the knowledge do for you then? Mm, puffs you up. It puffs you up, and you don't even realize that you're calm. You know why? Because your righteousness has you puffed up. And you'd rather be right than righteous. You'd rather be right than holy. And because you're right, you're feeling you look a certain way. You talk like this. Nah, 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 nah. Because you think you're right. And people follow it. You know why? Because people are fearful. People are afraid. And they get so, they get clamish. And they hold on to people. They look around because they're afraid. Nobody's big and bold enough to stand and say, man, that ain't right. Who challenges the enemy? Read, man. Read, read. I'm getting off. Read. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, verse 4. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and uh -huh. another I am of Apollos, are ye not Are ye not yet come? Read. 5. For who then is Paul, and uh -huh. who is Apollos, but ministers We're, by whom ye believe? So why are we just, we're so attached, and we get in the wrong vein? Now go back to 2 Corinthians 10. The scripture says, the weapons of our warfare are not come, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is what we want to do. We want to pull the strongholds down. We don't want them to be up in our mind like a dream. You know, you have a dream and you wake up because the dream seems so real. Mm -hmm. We've all done that. You wake up and say, man, I, and you wake up looking for the event that was happening in the dream. Because why? It's fresh in our mind. It's big in our head. Paul said we want to pull down the strongholds because if we don't, they'll begin to activate. And the stronghold will be the only thing we're operating by. Not by the Spirit of God, but by the thing that has us locked in. And we can't see anything else. We can't hear anything else. We can't feel anything else other than this picture that we've created in our mind of what reality is. And it's not reality at all. It's only a perception, which is our reality, right? right. So then, and we're so locked into that that we can't hear God. God is talking. The Scripture is talking. My wife is talking. I don't hear nothing but I'm afraid for this phone grumbling. Snagger, fragger, 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 snagger. Y'all remember that? Yes. Fred would get mad and start cursing. Fritz phone label, snagger, fragger, fragger, snagger, fragger. You know, that's, that's Fred cussing. I hope y'all are not cussing up here. I guess Fred Flintstone style. So now, so so what happens? That's all we can see. All we hear is Charlie Brown's teaching. We don't hear God, and God is doing what he can to get to us. He's speaking to us, but we ain't listening because our spirit is on 10. We way out there in the stratosphere somewhere. Mad. And by the time we come, what did the prophet son do? He came to himself. To himself. Yes. By the time we come to ourselves, like, whoa, whoa, what happened? What have I done? Right. Yeah. Now you got to pay for all that. Mm -hmm. Now you got to pay for all that. You mean I destroyed the car? Yeah, you got to get it fixed. I broke all the dishes? Yeah, now you got to buy more. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's nothing but a trick of the enemy, and now we got to pay for that. Now you got to come out of your pocket to pay for it. I got to pay for my own foolishness now. Got mad and turned the couch over. Broke it. Now we got to what to say. Now I got to find four, four, five hundred dollars <laughs> mm. for, for my own stupidity. Yes. But we don't see it like that. We, we get to doing things and get to operating. We don't see it like that because we don't want to hear the truth. All right, last verse. Six. Romans chapter eight. Y'all caught that right? Yes. Romans chapter eight. Now this, now, now, hear what the scripture says. It says in Romans seven, because we get caught in Romans seven. Y'all know we get locked in. We go to Romans 7 and we start reading and we get locked in. Yeah. Why? What is, who can give me a quick summary of what Romans 7 is saying? Part of it. Part of it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Romans 7, Paul is talking about the struggle with 
his spirituality versus his flesh and where he desires to do good, the evil is there. Right. And what I wouldn't, what I'm not supposed to do, that thing I do, yes. and what I should do, that's the thing I don't do. Yeah, so we get caught right there. We get stuck right there, and we read that as if that's the last book of the Bible. As if it's the book of Revelation, the last chapter. We read that, and we're done with the whole Bible. Well, if we would have just kept reading, we'll see Paul talked about then, and you keep reading, he talks about now. Chapter 7 is then. Chapter 8 is now. How do I know that? What's the fourth <laughs> word? Now. Now. So then, now is in comparison to then. So Paul said there used to be a place at a time where all I could do was struggle with my flesh. Mm -hmm. And Paul said I was going through bad. And probably the time was when he was in the wilderness. Remember Paul got saved and didn't really have a public ministry until 17 years later. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what Paul was going through through those times. We don't know what was happening with Paul during those 17 years. But Paul said, I wanted to do good, but I couldn't because my flesh was overpowering in the spirit. My flesh was stronger than my spirit. Yes, sir. And, and that says something right there because, because, number one, Paul was a great apostle. Yes, he was. But number two, his transformation obviously did not occur overnight. No, it didn't. No, it did not. It was a process. Mm -hmm. And so what happened, Paul is writing, telling them what was happening then. What was happening then? But then he says, read, read the last verse of chapter 7. The last verse of chapter 7, and then start a verse in chapter 8, verse 1. Listen, listen to what Paul says. All right. And then we're going to be finished. Done. Kaput. All right. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ uh -huh. our Lord. Uh -huh. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, uh -huh. but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul said, in my mind, I serve the law of God. And Paul said, in my spirit, basically, I serve the law of God. And he said, it, it, Paul said, in my mind. Meaning, you know, if Paul says in my mind, I serve the law of God, you know what that means? That means his spirit is now in total authority. Mm -hmm. Because your mind is wrestling against your spirit for authority of the body. The body, access to the body, because the body is what speaks. The body is what acts. The body is what does in, in this earthly realm. So your mind wants control of the body so it can remain carnal. Your spirit wants control of your mind so that the body can do what is spiritual. And Paul said, with my mind, I serve the law of God. What did the next verse say? Therefore, because with my mind, I'm serving the law of God, therefore what? There, there is therefore now uh -huh. no condemnation. Because my mind is serving the law of God, there is therefore now no condemnation to them, read, which are in Christ, which are in Christ Jesus, read on, who walk not, who walk after, not after the flesh, but after, after the spirit. spirit, read, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free for what? The, the law, law of sin, sin and death. So Paul is saying there was a time when I couldn't do what I wanted to do because my mind had authority over my body. But Paul said, now that I've grown up, there is therefore now no condemnation in my life. Keep reading. For what the law could not For do. the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Read. God sending God his, sending own, his son. own son. How did he send him? Look at the key word. What's the key word there? Likeness. Likeness. He sent him in the likeness of sinful flesh. So sinners thought he was a sinner. Mm -hmm. They looked at him and they saw a regular man. They said, who do you think he is? He, he put his pants on the same way I do. But he didn't put his spirit on the same way you do. His mind didn't think the same way yours did. He may look like you. He may sound like you. But he ain't you. He's in the likeness of sinful flesh. He may look like a sinner, but he ain't one. And that's how we're supposed to be. The likeness, look what it says. And for sin, yes. did what? Condemn, Condemn sin. Sin, where? In, in the, the flesh. flesh. Now hold on. He did what to sin? Condemned it in the flesh. Where? In the flesh. Yes. He condemned sin. In the flesh. What is condemn? You ever seen a condemned house? Yes. There's tape and wood all over it. Mm -hmm. Do not enter. Because if you do, it might collapse at any time. Don't enter this condemnated place because when it collapses, guess who you are now with it? You are, because you're in there. It's been condemned. So Yahshua condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned, what, what he did was he took sin and he condemned it. You are no longer active in the physical body now because I now have authority. 
And if someone submits themselves to me and begin to walk as my word says, you have no more authority in their life. That's the lie and the fallacy and the fables that we keep telling the church folk is that you got to keep sinning. You don't have to. It's a choice. Y'all know why I sin? Because you want to. Because I want to. Did y'all just tell me that? <laughs> y'all got nerves. That's the truth. It's the truth. We do what we want to do and then we want to justify it and take the power of God and make it a matter of fact. The blood of Yahshua has made us free from sin. Yes. Read. We're almost done. Yes. What does it say? No, uh, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after So the righteousness that was inside of the law yes. is now fulfilled in us yes. who, who walk not after the law. Right. We don't walk after the flesh. But the righteousness that was hidden in the law is now revealed in us. Why? Because we're led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. That's what people don't understand is that the law was to make people spiritual, but it had to do it through the acknowledgement of their flesh. But now God says, I am not no longer around you only. I am now in you. And because of I'm in you, if you yield and step out the way, I'll walk for you. I'll talk for you. Yes. I'll go for you. If you get out the way, Hallelujah. Yes. and then what's going to happen? The law is being fulfilled. And people who want to keep the law in their flesh, they don't understand that kind of language. They want to remain in the flesh and do something in the flesh. You don't understand the fact that you don't have to do anything now. To live is Christ. To die is gain. But we want to do something in our flesh. I mean, we, 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 we. <laughs> for that, For they that are after the flesh do, do mind the things the of the flesh, but Absolutely. they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Read the next verse. Watch, listen to this very carefully. For to be carnally minded. To be carnally minded is what? Death. death. But to be spiritual minded is life and is peace. Is life and peace. Read. Because the, the carnal, carnal mind is enmity is against God's you. enemy. We don't. For it is not subject not to the subject. law of God. How do I know I'm carnal? How do I know if I'm carnal or not? Read it again. For the carnal mind is what? Enmity against this God. God. Read. For it is not subject, it's not to, the subject law of God. to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. Wait a minute. It's not what? Subject, subject to the law of God. God. How do I know if I'm carnal? Because I'm not subject to God's word. Yes. I am not subject to God's word. It ain't about me being subject to my wife or being subject to my boss or being subject to whoever's in authority. I ain't subject to God's word. That's why I'm not subject to my wife. That's why I'm not subject to those ones. Because I'm not subject to God's word. The scripture says the carnal mind is enmity against God and it is not subject to God's word. And if I'm not subject to God's word, then guess what? I'm still carnal. Yes. Even though I preached a good message and folk ran around the church. That's because God says, I know you're carnal, but I'm going to use your son because these people need help. Mm -hmm. And they ain't think about your carnality. Amen. And you say, oh, you got nerve. But God uses who he wants to. Yes. And he's going to use whoever is available. Yes. So now, I have to make my mind up. What am I going to do? Am I going to continue in the flesh? Or what am I here? Am I going to walk in the spirit? What am I going to do? How long? Who said that? Hulk ye. Elijah. Between the two opinions. Yes. If God be God, Let serve him. him. Yes. If Baal, serve him. him. Who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who said, whose side are you on? If you're on the Lord's side, stand on this side of the land. If you're on the devil's side, stand on this side. You know why? Because there's going to be a great dividing in the earth, and all of you who are not on the Lord's side are going to fall right in. The Bible said 300,000 people were killed in one day. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever read that before? Yes. They all, in one day, God opened up the earth and swallowed 300,000. It's a lot of people. Yes, it is. In one day, as Moses said, you better get over here. <laughs> the earth is about to quake. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand, are we really on God's side? That's the question to Apostle J.W. West here today. Whose side are you on, my brother? Who are you serving? Who do you really love? Who do you love? Who do you really love? I know that. I'm just saying, who do you really love? Who do you really love? You really love the Lord? Yahshua said something very profound. Very, very profound. And I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm going to give it to you, King James. I'm going to give it to you straight. If you love me, mm -hmm. you will keep my commandments. Yes. Yep. Aramaic. When you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Oh. So when I love you, I'm going to keep your commandments. And here it comes, folks. So if I'm not really abiding in his word, do I really love him? Mm -hmm. 
Hello? It hurts, but guess what? We need to confess that. Get that out in the open. You know what, Lord? I don't love you. Or we can even fix it. You know what, Lord? I haven't loved you. Because now, having loved you means there's something coming. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. That means there's a doorway for me to say something. Lord, I haven't loved you the way I should have. I haven't conducted myself the way I should have. I haven't, Lord, and I, I confess that right now. Hallelujah. I confess that yes, right now. Yes. I haven't done all the things that I know I should have done. Mm -hmm. I haven't said all the things that I know I should have said. I haven't loved the sense of God the way I should have. Right? I haven't loved my wife bestly the way I should have. I haven't loved my children the way I should have. I haven't loved my parents, my siblings the way I should have. Now, you're setting up the ground for you to say, and the Lord is just looking at you and saying, okay, so what's coming next? <laughs> All right, you have it? Okay, now what? So, Lord, I repent. And I repent for not doing those things, but hitherfor, going forward, y'all the hint, I shall do all those things that I haven't done. Hallelujah. Be bold enough to say it. Yes. Make a vow to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Be bold enough. Then, not only be bold enough to say it, be bold enough to do what? Do, do, it. do it. Yes. To walk in it. Uh, be not hearers. But doers of the word. Yes. So this is what we got to get to. We got to make our mind up that you know what? I haven't done what I should. I haven't. I haven't done what I should, Lord. I haven't loved you. For all you should say, I know I love the Lord. I might fall every now and then. I ain't talking about falling. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you tripping up in the sand. I'm talking about us adhering to God's word. Job 5 and 19, you ain't got to read it. But Job 5 and 19, sure enough, gives us a declaration about falling. Uh, Solomon said, a righteous man fall. But arise again. It isn't about him falling again. No. Job 5.19 talks about seven times falling. Right? But don't say about falling at any time. Because when you get to a certain place in your life, there will be no more falling. Mm -hmm. Last verse. I know I said it, but forgive me. Second Peter 1.10. Mm -hmm. Last of the last verses. And then I'll stop lecturing. I like it. I like it. <laughs> second, second Peter 1.10. That's the right verse. Second Peter 1.10. Uh, but calling an election sure? Yes, 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 yes. yes. What is it? Second Peter chapter one verse. Now, I want you to hear this and hear this very, very carefully. What is it? Say? Wherefore the rather, brother? Wherefore the rather, brother? Give, the rather, give diligence to, to make, make your, your calling and election sure. Give diligence to take heed or pay attention to your calling and your election. Why? Because that's the thing the enemy is trying to get rid of. He's trying to get rid of who God has called us to be. Dude, look, you think the devil, he don't just want to kill me. I'm just a small dot on the map. Killing me is just one more step closer to killing the whole body. So he's trying to take out the saints one at a time in order to get rid of the whole body of Christ. That's the goal. You think, well, the devil wants me out because I'm a general. He wants you out because you're part of the generation. Come on. That's why he wants you out. So the devil is trying to stop my calling and my election from manifesting in the earth. So give diligence to make sure of your calling and election. Read. Hallelujah. If you do these things. Oh, oh, oh. What things? Making your calling and election sure. What else? Oh, are we talking about the fruit? Yes. Okay. If you do these things, add to your faith knowledge. Wow. To knowledge virtue. To virtue patience. To patience uh, whatever it is. All the rest of them. Yes. Right? If you do these things, what's going to happen? Ye shall never fall. How often will you fall? Zero. How often will you fall? What the scripture, read the word, what the word says. Never. never. Now I always thought never meant never. Give me a definition of never. Not at all at any time. Right? Yes. Oh, you look it up. All right, all right, all right. What is it? Give me a definition of never. Right. What is it? Never. Uh, certainly not. Not at all. By no means. <laughs> You will fall, certainly not, not at all, by no means, will you fall. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. So that means I don't have to fall. I don't have to, right? Amen. I don't have to fall. I might fall, but it ain't because I have to. It's because, apparently, I'm falling because I want to. I want to fall. So I've said it in my heart that falling is a possibility. And as long as it's in my heart that falling is a possibility, that means that the door of falling is cracked. Yes. And I'm going to leave that door cracked just in case I fall. How about you close the door and make a declaration, I'm not going to fall. Hallelujah. What did Marvin Wyman say? I know you be here if ever I fall. But it's better to know that I don't have to fall at all. Yes. Yes. Matthew 5, 48. Be there for perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. 1 John 4, 17. What does it say? Here is our love made perfect. 
that we may be have boldness because we have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. First John three nine. First John three nine. Whosoever is born of God uh -huh. does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he, he cannot sin. First John three two. First John three two. Beloved, now are we the sons of Where? God. Now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. First Peter 1 9. I don't know what that said, but it sounds good. Okay. Read it. First Peter I just heard that. First Peter 1 9. What it said? Receiving the end of your faith. Even Receiving what? The, the end, end of, of your, your faith. faith. Even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul. When your soul is matured perfectly, then you don't need to walk in it. But, I, but you can literally break that down. Yes. Re receiving the end thing that is supposed to come out of your faith. Yes. Which is the salvation, salvation of your soul. soul. That's what I was going to say. So I'm telling y'all, that is what, you hear those verses, and guess what? There's more. Mm -hmm. There's more. There's Deuteronomy 28. There's Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 12. Go there. There's more verses. There's Romans 13. There's more verses. So every time, every time someone comes to try to give you a scripture to depress you, give them one to enlighten them. Hallelujah. Give them one to enlighten them. You know, we fall down, but we get up. If the song feels good, mm -hmm. and it's true, but there's a point when we don't fall down. Amen. Read. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. All these witnesses that Elder talked about this morning mm -hmm. in Hebrews 11. Yes. What would he what say? Let us lay aside lay every, aside every weight and the sin, and the sin which, so, which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Lay aside the sin and the weight. Put it aside. There's got to be a day of adulthood. Matthew 11 and 12. What does it say? Quote it. For the kingdom of God, suffer violence. And the violent, take it by force. Daniel eleven thirty five. Quote it. Give me the good part. What does it say? It says, uh, and they that do thy will. Read it. And they that do thy will. Oh, my God. I hear it. Daniel what now? Eleven thirty five. I hear it. Thank you, Father. Oh, man. Daniel 12 right. and 4. These verses are running rapid in my spirit. What 1135 said? 11, Daniel 1135. 11, uh -huh. And some of them of uh -huh. understanding shall fall uh -huh. at, to try them uh -huh. and to purge. 1132, read it. What it say? 1132. Man, I keep hearing all these verses. Okay. What it says? Such as do wickedly as against, do the covenant, against the covenant, what? shall he corrupt by flattery. Uh -huh. but, 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 but the people, but the people that, that do know, know their, God their God shall be strong and do exploits. But the people that what? Do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. What Daniel 12 and 4 said? Daniel 12 and 4. The people that do know their God should be strong. Why am I strong? Apparently, I don't know my God. Hmm. I'm just, I'm, can I just be raw with it? Come Why on. are we want to sugarcoat it? The point, blank, bottom line is the Lord shed his blood, and we have proven that his blood is not enough. Come on. We've proven by our lifestyle that the blood is not enough. What do you mean, Apostle? Because we keep acting a fool. We're strong on Facebook, but we're weak in real life. Some of us read on Facebook. Oh, now. <laughs> read. I'm sorry. Daniel 12 and 4. Uh -huh. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Uh -huh. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall be increased. Hosea 4, 6. What's going to happen to knowledge? It's going to be increased. But it's only going to be increased if Hosea 4 and 6 is fulfilled. What does it say? That's it, 4 and 6. Yes, you did. That's the right verse. Yes, it is. What does it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Stop reading. Don't preach yet. My people are what? Destroyed why? For a lack of knowledge. You can't really preach that. No. You can't. What do you mean you can't preach it? Because you're not done reading the totality of what he's saying. Hallelujah. What the next line say? Because thou hast Oh, you are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because you have rejected knowledge. The Bible said knowledge shall be increased only if you don't reject it. Amen. Because when you reject knowledge, what happens? I, I will reject, reject you. you. Yes. So you're destroyed because of the knowledge that you pushed away. Because mm -hmm. yes. you. you rejected it. Got in the way. Because we don't want to learn from people who are beneath us. Mm -hmm.
what is my wife going to teach me? She's beneath me. Can't tell me nothing. Did God give it to you? Yeah. Does the Lord does the Lord know what He's doing? Yeah. So what if the Lord decides to use her? Uh. <laughs> Y'all feel that? Yes. Get out of the flesh. Get out of the flesh. Your child that's two years old can teach you something. Amen. Listen, the man in the bridge with a sign saying, "Please help," he can teach you something. Yes. Your dog, your cat can teach you something. Know that. Know that our flesh needs to be deleted. Our flesh needs to be deleted. Common mind needs to go. All right? Last verses of the last verses. Romans 12, verse 2. As a matter of fact, read verse 1 for GP. All right. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Verse I beseech, 1 I beseech you, therefore, beseech brethren, you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, yes, that ye present your, your bodies body, a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Your what? Your body. Yes. What's the Greek word for body? Let's see if it's so much. What's the Greek word for body? Is it your bodies? What's the Greek word there? It is soma. Oh boy. If it's soma, you know what that means? Soma means your physicality. Mm -hmm. So if so Paul said, I beseech you of her brother, by the mercy of God, to present your physical self. What? Holy. And acceptable to God. How do you present your physical self holy and acceptable? By letting the cup run over and onto your flesh. By letting the anointing on the inside flow out onto the outside. Now remember, not too young. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Brought about a change in my life. So that's what we got to do when Paul says, your body, present your body alive. Mm -hmm. That means something on the inside is working on the outside and is bringing a change in my life. Read. Uh, verse 2. And be not conformed. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye Trans transformed. Hold on. Be what? Transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And when your mind is renewed, you approve what is good, Excellent. what is acceptable, and what is perfect. Yes. But we are so caught up in what we can't do. What we can't do. Rather than Philippians 4.13, what it says. I can't do. Is it 4.13? Yes, Let's test it. All right. Philippians 4.13. Prove all things. Hold fast it up as Philippians 4.13, I can do. I can do how many things? All. Wait, wait, what can I do? All things. I can do all things how? Through right. Christ that strengthens me. So then, therefore, there's nothing I can't do, including walking without sin. Come on. I can do all things through Christ. Whatever Christ did, we can do. Did Christ walk without sin? He showed up dead. Then we can do it. Well, we can't be like the Lord. <laughs> says who? Thank you. Says who? Says who? That's exactly what came to my mind. <laughs> right. Says who? So we got a challenge. And the challenge is who we're going to be like. Mm -hmm. Whose report do you believe? Did somebody say that to me? Oh. Whose report do you believe? I'm yeah. still in your verse. <laughs> Whose report do you believe? And then the bad question is who believes your report? Hmm. Nah. Whose report do you believe? Elder said, I will believe the report of the Lord. Y'all remember that song? Ron Canone, whose report do you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. That's what Ron Canone said, right? Mm -hmm. So now, that's what the scripture said. He's saying the scripture. Yes. We believe the report of the Lord. If we believe God's report, therefore I am clean. Therefore I am healed. I am free. I am rich, spiritually and naturally. I am encouraged. I am enlightened. I am ready because I believe God's report about me. Who said something about let the weak say they're strong? Let the weak say they're strong. Did I hear that today or no? Let the weak say they're strong. Who said it? Oh, you did? Let the weak say that I'm strong. Look, that means that means even if you feel weak, what you say? say you I'm strong. strong. Yes. Let the weak say I'm strong. Yes. You know what it is? So if you feel weak, say I'm strong. Yes. Mm. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Speaking people of God. Let's transform ourselves to another place. A place of constant, always, forever protruding victory. Can we do it? We can. Yes. Do we want to? That's the question. Right. Mm. Yeah. We're able. Now to him who is able yeah. to keep you. Yeah. Yes. And to keep you from falling. Yeah. And if that you fall, 
before the presence of the glory, when he sees, where's that at? At June 24. Read June. Last verse. I don't know if that's right, brother. I just five sounds like it. Is that it? Amen. What is it? Now unto him that uh -huh. is able to keep you from falling. And do what? And present you faultless. Stop. Present me how? Faultless. How? Huh? Faultless. Is that what the scripture said? We talking about starch? I got that. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> present you how? Faultless. So God is able to make me what? Faultless. Where? Not in the earth. No. Make me faultless where? In his presence. In his presence. What? You're in the presence of God. Say, judge me, Lord. And God says, I feel your son. Walk on by. Walk on, walk on, walk on. Walk on by. Okay. So, understand. God said, not only are you bold here, but you can be bold in his presence. Boldly before the throne of grace. All right, I've been talking a long time. Oh, my goodness. But we got to make these declarations. We have got to come to a real decision. Now you get to what they call a fork in the road. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember I was chasing somebody once. I was a teenager. And I was chasing. I was chasing them in my car. And oh man, and they were scared. And I couldn't wait to get to them because I had some heat for them. I had some fault. And I was chasing them. And, and, and I, I didn't know which way they went. But it was it was about a 60, 70 mile ride. I was on them because I had to get my vengeance. Vengeance wasn't the Lord's. Was mine that day. So I'm chasing them. And I, I didn't see which way they went. But I ran straight. And it was like. A, 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 not a fork, but a T. And I didn't see him. I looked behind me, there was no way for me to turn around. And I'm like, what? I'm going right. And I went right, I never saw him again. <laughs> know what that means? You went left. <laughs> they went left. <laughs> so we got to make a decision on which way we're going to go. You're going right, or you're going left. Make a decision. Righteousness, left out. Which way you're going? We got to make a decision. And then, What's more important than making a decision? Commitment. Sticking to it. Yes, commitment. Yeah. That's most important. Sticking to it. Are you? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you. We love your word, Father. We love your word. We thank you because your word is true. Your word is real. Your word is love. And we thank you for your word. And we love you, Father. And we bless you. Hallelujah. We bless your presence. In Yeshua's name. Amen.